Welcome back, uh, Martin Flink here. I'm just going to take you through some interesting uh, ways to uh, get started in your creative pursuits with J Wildfire. Anytime you start J Wildfire, you have three uh, automatically generated um, um, random flames, and in this case, um, you know, if you wanted to play with them, you could just double click, and it'll be loaded into your viewport, and then you can have a little play with it. And obviously you can see the variations, the transforms here. And on each transform you might have a number of different variations attached. And uh, nonlinear kind of um, formulas that's been applied as part of that particular transform. Now this is where it kind of gets fun. Now in order to explore all these things, you, you will find that the best way to do it is to kind of play with the random flames first and sort of get into the various things that you can do with them and move things like the transforms around in the window and see which ones do what and you know by just playing with these things you, you will soon get a fair idea of what's going on. Now also um, very important insofar as what makes things look the way they do in a particular flame is the various weights that you have attached to um, the transforms and this will basically uh, decide the, the actual uh, probabilities if you want of a particular transform taking place and there's also relative weights within each of these transforms you can also switch the way they link to previous transform uh, configurations and themselves now this sounds very complicated but to be honest uh, I'm gonna stay away from the mats in the you know uh, in the early days here and, and just get you going. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start up and um, show you a couple of things. Uh, first of all the random flame generation. Um, one thing that you can do here is if you go to the preferences you'll see here that under TINA random batch size I've set that to 7. It's standard defaults to 24 which is a lot of uh, randomly generated flames and you're going to be you know given the whole rake of them down here. Uh, 7 is exactly what fits in my particular viewport or in my particular uh, setup down here so if I want to sort of create a set of random flames all you have to do is uh, decide which type there's bubbles, bubbles three-dimensional ones and experimental 3D gnarls experimental gnarls, floor, uh, flowers, 3D stunning ones, experimental flowers, Julian discs, simple, uh, simple experimental, linear only, spherical 3D, subflames and tentacles. Now if you leave it at all it'll then uh, give you a random collection of all of these. So by clicking random flames you can see here as it's creating these you get uh, a progress indication while they're being produced. And there we have it. I have now seven new randomly generated flames and you can just basically to see what they look like just double click on each individual one and have a look and see what you like. If there's anything there that you kind of want to play with go for it. And perhaps uh, before you start messing about too much you might want to just save the flame and in my case what I tend to do when I save flames is I just go in save flame auto generated and I tend to name them according to the date and today happens to be the 15th of April 2012 put a little hyphen there and start off with 01 now in order to sort of save them quickly I tend to select that and do control C to save that so I can remember which number I'm up to if I'm going to save a lot of them. So we'll just take that one and that one and then I'll put that one in just control V here in this case to call that back. Shift home control C so I remember that one and so on and so forth. So that's just a little quick trick to Remember where you are in the numerics. You can use copy and paste. 
Now I've saved three of them. Okay, I'm not happy with most of that, so I'm just going to try a few specific ones like simples or linear only. Click on random flames again. And here we have a new batch with uh, linear transforms only, and you can see which ones are applied on each of these. And if you like anything, uh, just save it. The simple ones are quite cool, simple, stunning. You also have two options here, symmetry and post transforms. And we're going to just do a quick random again here. Okay, so this is what we get with just simple stunning. There's an interesting one. And before you sort of decide to save them, you might want to zoom in to them a bit, and, you know, have a look, maybe do a quick without the actual triangles. So I switched off the triangles from you and do a quick render. See what it's like. If I'm happy, I'll save it. If not, I'll go on. Or I might just have a little pull around and play around with these things. And as you can see, it's so easy to just start from something very simple that you got for free and start messing about. You can either click on these triangles in here to select them, or you can just go over here to select the individual ones and the ones that are um, being pulled or the transform that you're actually affecting is uh, the one that you have selected up here and by just kind of scaling, rotating, playing around you very quickly can create completely different looks of what you were given so that's a very quick trick start off with simple random ones and uh, play around with them and see what happens we'll go into more detail here in a second now to show you um, the difference that symmetry does uh, if we start with some linear onlys do another quick one you can see that um, these are fairly random and there's not that much, much symmetry to it so if we then just select symmetry and do it again now when we look at those um, random ones you can see fairly quickly that we have symmetry on the old triangles here the transforms and this one is quite obvious and as you can see you get more symmetrical uh, flames out of those settings so that's symmetry and post transforms is when you actually have additional um, uh, transformations applied on a per transform basis. Now so there's two parts to a, any given triangle. There's a post transform and a standard transform. So to just illustrate that we're going to switch on post transforms and do another random batch. And if we look at the post transforms now you'll see that they're in different positions so they've been shifted from the original transform and that means we get kind of more interesting kind of patterns here well not always more interesting but it's uh, just one additional um, set of rules and permutations that you can apply to each individual transformation Finally, um, while we're on the random flame generation, uh, I'm just going to show you um, an interesting one here, subflames. Now this is something that we'll go into in uh, a more advanced tutorial uh, in the near future. But subflames is one very clever trick that uh, J, J Wildfire has up its sleeve, where you can attach um, actual flames that you've created before as a subflame within a, a single transform. Now this is quite uh, an advanced feature and by just selecting subflame here in my random generator, clicking on random flames, you'll get a bit of an idea of it. Okay, so um, here you can see the sort of intricate designs that can come out of just a quick press of one button, random flames. And using the subflames you can get extremely complex setups. And this is the first one here, as you can see, and there's quite a few interesting ones here. I might sort of sit down and save all those for later play. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here, 